Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, sorry I dipped out for a little bit longer than as usual, um, but I was waiting for a new mic and recorder to come in, and actually I um, was having trouble getting in a few hours last week, so I kind of focused on work work a little bit more, but uh, I am back and I have an update on the ocean boards today. I uh, wanted to give you a sense of uh, how they've been progressing and also give you a chance to see how I'm pouring the water, which is a question I frequently get. How do I keep all the water in when I'm pouring it? So uh, let's come over to the boards. I'll show you what I've been doing and some thoughts about it. So just before we take a look at the uh, board up close, I wanted to just show you a sort of before and after um, and talk a little bit about how I got to this stage. Um, so. First, um, just to talk a little bit about the sand, and we'll see the texture a little bit better, but one of the things I decided to do that was a little different than what I've done in the past was to not put in the soil and the area where the flock is going to be uh, just yet. I'm not entirely sure how the water is going to finish as it comes up. It may look very far away at the moment, but it is going to move quite a bit forward. And I didn't want to have to, uh, you know, hem myself in by having put down a fixed line of soil and then have to be restricted on how the water would move. So I decided to leave that off. And then um, at the end, once all the water effects are done, I'll just tape this off and put down the final uh, finish there. Secondly, um, you'll see um, that what I've done for painting the boards is to, um, I tried something a little different. I'm not entirely sure it's showing, but it certainly doesn't hurt, is I um, airbrushed out that uh, color a little bit softer. I had been hoping that I could do that with my new uh, paint sprayer, but I'm going to need to learn how to manage that sprayer a little bit better, you know, and over some time and see if I can get this kind of effect. But anyway, I just broke out the old conventional airbrush and uh, feathered that out just a little bit. And this is about um, the depth right here is going to be the line where the first pour is and that's a very dark tint um, so it pretty much almost makes this all opaque in any case uh, but um, I thought let's just put that in and see if it gives a slightly better effect. Third thing you might notice um, is that um, the board surface here is actually quite rough. Uh, this was a board that I um, actually resurfaced. This is an older board that, I'm, uh, that I tapped back into for this project, sort of a conversion. It was not fully underway, but anyway. And that left um, an, a sort of rough texture. Now, actually, there was some of that area on the other boards as well, and that made painting it a little bit of a challenge because this area um, doesn't absorb paint as well as it shows here. So I had to go over those a little bit more. And you'll also notice around the rock here, there's this light area and you can see some of that around here. Uh, this is from um, putting the rock on the board and then I taped the whole thing off so that I could paint around it because I wanted it, you know, basically buried in the sand and uh, when I removed the tape, then I thought I would just touch it up around it. It's actually kind of tricky to touch it up to get it to match. I mean, you, you could painting it and painting it, but this really absorbs a lot of paint. And I realized or hoped, and uh, we'll see that on this board, that this wouldn't really show uh, once the water is poured. And that has worked out as I expected, uh, thank goodness. Um, and if a little bit of the lighter area shows after the water is fully, you know, poured, then it'll just look a little bit like the land might be sloping up to these uh, rocks that are coming out of the water. So I think it's going to work just fine. Um, and this little transitional area here, um, that's not going to show at all. Um, and so um, as a last thought before we break from this board, um, and maybe a little uh, looky 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 away from the boards and then a close-up maybe a nice contrast when i painted the rocks i decided to go for something a little closer to more of a traditional gray than i have um, in the previous ocean board set and when i looked at all of the videos and photos of oceans that i did i saw actually quite a bit of variety in the rocks that were present so i decided that i really have some flexibility and i wanted to try something with a little bit more of a muted color scheme than what i did in the past try to preserve um, a little bit more of the detail, a little more realistic shading. So that is kind of where I went. 
And here's where I am. And I'm going to lay this board down on the bench and then we're going to take a closer look. So here you can see uh, the board in a little bit more detail. And one of the things uh, we'll sort of maybe we'll work from this way uh, down, even though that's the well, it's not really the reverse of how I did it. But in any case, um, so this is the uh, frit that I showed in a previous video. Um, and if I can remember what video that is, I'll put a link up here to it. Um, I think I know. And I wanted that very, very fine texture. And you'll see the contrast when I do the uh, final soil, uh, which is more of a traditional sand type coating. It'd be nice if my hand was in frame. Um, and uh, this is just a very uniform, very, very fine grit. And it's, uh, you know, you can't put down a heavy layer of glue and you can't put down a heavy layer of paint or you'll really, um, you know, take away the ability, say, to dry brush it and bring it up. Now, I haven't dry brushed it or highlighted it in any way at this point because I've done that in the past and it really doesn't make sense because it wouldn't be highlighted under the water. So I decided what I'm going to do is wait until the water is totally uh, filled and then I will find the areas that are not quite uh, covered and then I will dry brush those so the wet areas won't have that highlight and you can see some of that effect here. Moving towards the water, um, this is um, sort of a double, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a two for one experiment slash purpose. How's that? Um, in that first, I want to always try to feather the colors of the water. This is um, poured, this is uh, pour number three. And each of the layers has a lighter and lighter tint. And so um, I try to pull it up as thin as I can so that the transition between the colors is smoother. And you can see, right, there's a little transition here um, and you see some banding and that is from the previous colors. Uh, and it's something that will show much less when the final layers are put on and the waves and all of that. Um, but it's just good practice and I really feel like it helps to make the transition smoother when you do that. This is a sort of Envirotex tip. Um, don't forget, I put a whole article on Envirotex on my Patreon page. It's public access there and um, I go into how to work with Envirotex. Uh, this is actually clear coat but it's the same type of material. So before you ask any questions, I think I have the answer to every question you might ask there. If I don't, put the comment down below, question, I'd be happy to answer it. So moving down this way, um, what you'll see is, and I'll tip this in a second, but just to get a view from this area, um, as I've put in some seaweed, uh, some seaweed, and I really tried something new here, right? Every time a little something new. And I decided to put in two layers of plants so that I could have a, a deeper looking column going into the water. Um, and uh, let's, let's maybe we'll do a little tip here and we can see it in a little bit better detail. Um, let's see here. Oh, well, there you go. There's a top view. All right. So um, this top layer, I don't want it to slide off the workbench. Jeez. Um, this top layer is, um, you know, obviously right at the surface. In fact, you can see it um, pushing up against the surface. That won't show um, when the next pour is put down and the waves are put over it. Um, but um, I actually had to push this into the resin uh, while it was soft and mostly cured um, because it was actually sitting up pretty high and I didn't want it to create a bump when I tried to put down the next layer, um, which was something I haven't done before, but I saw somebody mention it on an Amazon.com review on Envirotex. The woman sounded like she didn't know what she was doing with it, but she ended up doing that to smooth out some problems she was having. This was in the, um, oh, what do you... Mm, the review section and I thought oh I've never tried that and it was perfect timing because I actually needed to here so I'm pretty excited about that and I'm trying to uh, keep it in a shallow enough area that it will be viewable once all the top layers are put down um, and so, of course, as the water gets thinner, uh, my profile for um, space to put them in gets smaller and smaller. So there's some kind of a balance between the deeper water and the shallower water. And I think it worked out okay at this point. I think it's going to be all right. 
One of the advantages of putting it in here, however, is that on this side of the rock, as I mentioned when we were looking at both boards up against the bench, is that there's a little highlight area here. And uh, let's see if I bring it back up. I think you can see it. I mean, this is, this is really, if you know what to look for and where, you can see it. But maybe you can see this little line right there of color change. And that's the um, area that I hand painted and it just didn't really blend. But putting some of the uh, vegetation over it really masked it, it masked it, masked it. And uh, I think it's just a great, a great way to fix it and bring actually more interest to the board. I always say when I make a mistake, the customer wins because I improve things by trying to fix problems. So um, that's a little bit of the backstory there. Lastly, before we talk about the board setup itself, um, and this is, I, I do get people who say, why don't you just do it flat and then paint it? You know, you could paint the gradation and then have a single thin pour and you don't have to worry about building up all the layers. You won't get that effect, for instance, like this, and you won't get the effect that the rocks are below surface um, if you're just going to paint it and do a very thin pour. Um, this is the only way to get that kind of depth perspective and it's going to really, um, once the next layer is put on and, you know, and the waves and all of that, this is really going to give um, a, a very nice look, I think, and, uh, and you need the multiple pours for that. One interesting thing uh, before I leave this rock is um, it actually looks like, here yeah, you can see that, that there's actually quite a steep drop off, like all of a sudden the rock is uh, done. And um, that's because this cast actually came out with a very flat, almost undercut on this side. And uh, I don't know, I didn't think about it. I thought it's fine, you know, and, and in fact, it is fine. Don't, don't get me wrong. But um, I was expecting more of something like this, where it's got a much smoother uh, transition. And so if you remember um, the, the board that I showed that was unfinished, you know, not to this stage, um, it has a very, very shallow rock in it. It's going to really give a nice effect. And then I have some taller ones so I can have some of that uh, surging surf uh, splashing up against it. So that is the thinking about where I'm at right now. Um, this is going to get an additional pour when that pour is made. That's when I lay down the waves. I'm going to show you an example of that in a second. And that pour is going to take it all the way up to almost this far onto the shore. So there's, like I said, this is going to really come up and then I'm going to have the, the surf, you know, uh, wash and all of that. Um, so there's really only going to be a, a, a very, well, I'm still, I'm out of frame. You know, there's only going to be a very thin line of actual soil with grass on it and tufts and all of that on this board. Um, and I'm pushing that back a little further than I have in the past uh, because I want, you know, more action here, more interest. Um, and this is going to be uh, adjacent to other boards that are finished with green. We don't, we don't need more green here. This is an ocean board. So that's my thinking. So before I talk about the waves, because that's an extra um, piece, let me just uh, give you three three second thought on what I'm doing here in terms of how I make the pour, because as I said, um, people often ask, I don't know if this is going to stay in focus. Oh, we'll just do it just like that. I have manual focus locked, and but this is, um, you know, kind of ha can have a shallow depth of field at this close range. So what I do is I uh, glue the board uh, down to a piece of plywood. This is going in my um, shelf and I will show you a studio tour. I already shot it and I'm uh, going to render this and post this first for the customer and then I'm going to do the uh, studio tour. So I'm going to show you actually the rack that this fits into. Um, but in any case, it doesn't have to be that. Um, but you know, something that's nice and strong. Sometimes I just glue it right down to a table. And then um, I use a, uh, in this case, I'm using styrene, uh, but I've often used hardboard and I glue that. Um, I don't glue that actually. Usually I tape it um, around this. And in this instance, I did tack it with a little bit of super glue along the sides. I kind of wish I didn't have to do that because I'd already sanded the sides down and I'm gonna have to go in and do a little more cleaning. Um, but it's okay and I needed a good, I want a perfect 90 degree angle here. 
And by perfect, I mean as close as I can get, because <laughs> it's not going to be probably perfect, perfect, but it's the best I can do. Then, once that's done, then I run a little bead of epoxy all along the edges. Be very careful. You need a good seal on all of those because it will leak if you don't. And then I can do the pores of the Envirotex. So you have to create a dam, seal it, make sure your board is locked down, get everything ready, and then you can pour. And that's how to get the uh, depth effect. And um, if you're looking at We'll come back up just for a second. Oh, no, you can see right here. Um, so, you know, you see here, I'm going to be coming up to, um, you know, one more eighth of an inch. This is going to be pretty close to the top of these dams. Um, and uh, that's going to match. And we'll come back over here. And you can see here, when I top it here, right, this is going to be basically pretty close um, to the, uh, you know, the height of the, of the dam. So the, this is going to be pretty, pretty thick fill when it's done. Um, and, uh, that's the way to achieve that. Now, as a final thought, before I leave, let's talk about the, um, pro projected waves projected. Uh, hmm. this is a, uh, basically a test piece. This is a, uh, old cast that I made. Um, and basically for those of you who are new to, uh, my current iterations of ocean boards i made a mold of the wave texture and um, then i cast it with envirotex clear coat in this instance then when i remove that um, it actually looks more like this here where it's uh, quite you know uh, matte finish um, and what i've done in the past um, is um, i've coated that with another layer of Envirotex to bring the gloss up to make it um, uh, durable and to use that Envirotex to blend it to some of the other areas on the board that aren't, you know, actual wave casts. I haven't liked that because the Envirotex slumps a lot and I lose some of the fine texture that I tried to sculpt into it. Now, quite frankly, if I were to do this again, as I always want to do, I would change. This is probably the depth of focus right there. I would change the way I've done these in terms of their height, their spacing, the texture on them. I'm not doing that. I spent a lot of time making this mold. I want to use it. But the Envirotex was stripping away all of the texture that I've put in. And part of that is because it has such a long setup time. It's probably about three hours before you can start pushing it around where it will stay. And then you've got like a half an hour window before it gets too uh, tacky to be able to move. Now, if you're trying to do four boards all at once, that's a, not a good window. You might miss it on the start time. You might run out of time on the finish. So I decided to go out and try to get a new material. I bought some um, easy cast polyester resin, um, and I didn't use it, uh, but I bought it as a backup because uh, the first thing I wanted to try is this new material. It's called polyoptic. It is made by Brick in the Yard. It is expensive. Now, it's not like gold, but for, you know, two bottles, basically, uh, you know, a bottle, each bottle is a pint, uh, $45 for that. That's pretty pricey for materials that I use. But it is a wonderful, wonderful, crystal clear, beautiful resin. And I don't need that crystal clear look and in fact when i did this i was like oh my god I, I don't want the water to look like glass but then i realized you know i'm gonna tint some of this and it's gonna you know and then when it's mounted you'll actually um it will not look like this at all uh the light bouncing through this changes when it's basically wetted right to the board with more resin i'm not going to get into the physics of it but it's going to look different let's just say that but the nice thing about the polyoptic is that um it can uh, be put down as a very thin layer and it starts to get tacky enough to, to move it around within about a half an hour rather than three. I can monitor it more easily and then I can do a very thin cast and it preserves the texture that I've put on the waves. And I've been going back and looking at waves again and uh, I think this is going to be spot on. I think it's going to look fantastic, um, if, if I may say so. <laughs> but I do. I'm very excited about it. And um, and uh, the uh, only thing that's a problem with this material is it's reactive to moisture, like all urethane resins. And it seems like it's 
really reactive. And in fact, the bottle already shows it's getting a little like, oh, you know, I'm like, I got to use it. So we'll see. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, but um, anyway, that's the material I'm going to use. This is the type of wave uh, that will be over the bulk of this ocean. And then pretty much as you see here, right, it's going to taper off. And then I will be sculpting the final waves that will break on the shore. And uh, we'll talk about that when it gets down to that point. But this gives you an overview of some of my thinking, where I'm at with these. I've got four boards just like this. I just got in some more resin so I can start uh, casting up the waves and laying them down. That'll start happening in the next couple days. And then the real uh, fun begins of doing the waves to the shore. Always makes me nervous. I'm doing a couple mock-ups first. I want to practice, get it right, especially because I have a new shape of wave. Yeah, you know, makes me nervous, but I think it's going to be all right, but I uh, need a little practice first. So well, there you go, the ocean boards. So that gives you a look at the ocean boards and um, looking forward to uh, getting the wave effect onto the boards and seeing how that goes. Um, I have been practicing a little bit trying to get the new uh, sort of spill wave, which I um, showed in a uh, recent video on um, what my research on waves and how that influenced me. So uh, once I get a little bit more testing done on that, I feel pretty good about it right now, uh, then I will be um, doing the finish coating on the boards that I've poured already. And you know, I'll come back and I'll show you those when they're at that stage. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Always appreciate that and happy to try to shed some light on uh, questions if I can. And um, going to keep it brief here for the wrap up, but uh, hopefully you'll stay tuned. Uh, there's a lot more uh, content coming up very soon uh, because you know that I'll be back soon with another Terranscapes video.